Hey, what's going on guys? This is Youth Man. Today in this video, I thought I'd do something just a little bit different and give you kind of a behind the scenes of what it takes for me to do a home theater tour. Now, if you've been following the channel, I love doing home theater tours. That's probably my favorite thing that I do here on the channel. Of course, I love reviewing gear and product for you guys that are looking at upgrading or maybe you're building out your home theater. I do love reviewing product. But one of the things I really enjoy doing is doing home theater tours. And one thing that happens here in Florida is there's not a ton of home theaters. At least you guys haven't let me know that you're here. Um, but with doing home theater tours, I found that there's a lot of awesome home theaters, but they just happen to be in other states. And so I'm finding myself more and more traveling. And so several months ago, about six months ago, I traveled up to Wisconsin and Illinois I did 12 home theater tours in just four days. It was crazy, but it was a whole lot of fun. I brought all my gear with me, my lighting, my camera, tripod, um, backpack, laptop, all that stuff with me. And I'm just a one man guy doing this. And so that's produced some challenges. So kind of in this video, I wanna share with you some of those challenges and some things that, that I'm doing to overcome those, but really just kind of give you a, a behind the scenes look at what it takes to make these type of videos happen for you guys. Um, after I finished with the Wisconsin and Illinois trip, a couple of months later, I went up to um, Kansas City. Now Kansas City's got some really incredible home theaters as well. Had a chance to do nine home theater tours in I guess that was about four days as well. So that was a little bit easier to manage than 12 in four days. And then right after that, literally within a couple of weeks, I flew back up to Wisconsin and even drove about three hours from there down to Indiana. And I filmed two videos, which I'll be sharing with you here on the channel, probably in the next several weeks, um, sometime near the end of February. And that was a trip up to Perlison headquarters to check out some really incredible uh, speakers for two channel as well as home theater. And then we drove three hours, probably southeast of that to Indiana to, a, to film a home theater tour, um, a complete Perlison home theater tour. Fantastic, really, really incredible home theater. Can't wait to share that with you. With me now beginning to travel a lot more and I'm looking to do a lot more, I'm even going over to probably ISE, which is over in Europe. Uh, and I think it's in April, they had to postpone it. All of these travels, it's kind of challenging because here I have you know big lights and multiple lights and camera equipment and tripods and all this stuff and figuring out a way to get that, you know, onto a plane when it's just me by myself carrying this. Um, how do I make that happen? And so, I, like I said, I just want to share with you kind of what that process looks like. And so over the past couple of trips, um, the first trip was kind of tough because I probably spent several hours just trying to pack all this gear into a limited amount of luggage. And so, you know, on Southwest, is which is, which is what I usually travel on, and the biggest reason is they give me two free... Um, I guess, check-in bags. And so I can carry two of those with me. Then I can also carry uh, carry on on the plane and then like a personal item, like a backpack. And so it kind of gives me the most um, capacity for bringing as much gear as I need to uh, without having a nickel and dime in charge me for extra baggage. But one thing I tried to do is I'm like, you know what, I really, since I'm gonna be continuing to do this and traveling more and more, I'm a list kind of guy. And so in my phone, I actually um, wrote down a list. I took photos of where I put everything just to make it kind of easier, and just to give you an idea of kind of what I pack and how much I have to pack when I do a trip like this. So in the largest suitcase, I bought some uh, suitcases that are red just so that it makes it easy to find at the airport when I see it coming around on the conveyor belt. But in the large suitcase, here's what I carry. I've got my Ronin S, which is my big, large gimbal that you know can take you know my camera. This is my backup camera, but I can put it on the you know the, underneath the camera, and I can get these real smooth pans and uh, zooms and and kind of walk around the room, so it's real fluid for you guys and not kind of jerky all over. But it's a big case, 
So I put that in there. I've got two LED lights that go in there. Um, and then I also pack just a ton of little things. So I've got anywhere from tripod stands, I've got extension cables, I carry a, a power outlet that allows me to plug everything in to, to charge even while I'm on set. I can be charging other batteries after I swap them out in my camera. I've got tripod and tripod head. And so all that kind of goes in the biggest carry, I mean, the biggest check-in bag. And so that goes underneath the plane. And then I carry a, um, a really small carry-on. So that's gonna go on the plane with me in the overhead bins. And I figure, you know what? I'm not dare trusting Southwest or any other airlines with my camera. Um, so I wanna make sure I have that on my possession at all times. So that goes in the small bag, but it's, it's a pretty decent sized bag. Um, and so all that has my camera in it. It's got memory cards, it's got extra batteries. It's got um, even my microphones that I'm using now. And all that goes in there. I've even bought a new kind of road handheld mic so that when I'm out and about, maybe at a trade show, I can physically you know, have a handheld mic that I could pass around to somebody instead of having to clip them on, run the wire up their shirt and all that, just makes it easier. And then I've got my, you know, this lens here, which is kind of a, a big lens, but it's just a backup camera, just in case my main um, Canon R6 fails on me. And so I packed that all in there and then I've got my little uh, backpack. And so my backpack, the carry-on, carries my MacBook Air uh, with the M1 chip. That's been a great computer for travel. I can be in the hotel room, editing videos. Even on this past trip from Perlison, I'm excited. I'm editing on the plane, which is kind of awkward. I mean, you're really tight quarters and it's not ideal, but I've got two hours, two and a half hour flight. So I get a lot of work done, productivity. And so that's been really cool to be able to do that. But I kind of carry all that. I've got some wireless headphones that I carry that allows me to, um, to edit on the plane. They're noise canceling from Phaeton. I've got, um, I did a review on those a while back. Fantastic headphones, they sound great. But having the wireless headphones um, and also having the noise canceling has just been really solid. But this past time, um, I was getting ready to go, well not this past time, two times ago, two trips ago, um, there was a company that reached out to me. They said, hey Michael, um, I'm a contact from Manfrotto and we wanted to see if you'd be interested in reviewing some of our product. And so they know I'm a content creator. They, they've seen some of my videos. And so one of the challenges that I've had in carrying all of my gear is, you know, like I said, having big bulky gear. So this is my Oban tripod. So this is really nice. It's pretty lightweight. It extends really tall but it's massive. So when you think about this, you've got this tripod here, and this is a Manfrotto head that I bought. Absolutely love this. I think it's the 502AH is the model number. Beautiful head. But the problem is, as you can see, this thing's massive. I mean, this is big to put in a suitcase, um, and this thing actually weighs, the head weighs more than the actual legs do. But although I love this, I really wanted to figure out you know, can I get something that would be kind of more compact, lightweight, but yet still durable? And so I know a lot of photographers, a lot of videographers, they use Manfrotto products and I've been extremely pleased with this. Um, this tripod head just gives me really, really fluid motion, good pans and, and just makes some really great B-roll when I'm talking about a product or when I'm reviewing a set of speakers. I can get those slow pans, get that nice buttery B-roll for you guys. But Manfrotto reached out to me and they said, hey, you know, is there something that, you know, that you could review on your channel? And I'm thinking, man, you know, I really don't need anything, but I'm doing more travel. And one of the challenges is I've got these big bulky items. Can we get something that's a little bit more compact? And so I looked on their catalog and, and they had a tripod and I said, you know what? If you could send me this, I'd love to check that out and see if it'd work for these trips. And so I've been able to use this particular tripod over the past two trips, and it's been really, really solid. And so I wanna share with you a couple of things that I like about this. We'll talk about some things that maybe I don't like as much, but overall, this little guy has been fantastic. And so 
I'm gonna jump off the camera here from this position. I'm gonna bring it over to the side so we can kind of take a look at it. I'll put both of these side by side so you can kind of see what we're working with. Let's just kind of go through, you know, what this has to offer and uh, how this has done some, you know, allowed me to be a better content creator and travel light, but yet still have something. That's a really nice product. All right, so the first thing I wanna talk about is the compact size. So here we have my Oban tripod with the 502AH tripod head. And here we have the Manfrotto Be Free Live three-way advanced tripod. So this is a tripod as well as the head. So you can see here, it takes up probably half the size, which is super, super important. Both of them weigh about the same combined. Um, you know, this 502 head probably weighs a little bit more than this combined. So, but the biggest thing is that compact size. Now, this isn't a sponsored video, but Manfrotto did send this to me to review. So big thank you to you guys for doing that. So I just wanna kinda of talk about some things that I really like about this, some things that it has helped in my travels when I do content for you guys. So first thing, like I said, we've got really compact, decently lightweight. I mean, it's not carbon fiber, but it's definitely not super, super heavy. So fortunately, I don't have to carry this around like hiking or anything, but this is really a hybrid tripod. And what I mean by that is it's kind of designed for videographers as well as photographers. So maybe you don't do video, but maybe you do some photography. This is gonna work great for both of those. So I've got three legs, extensions here. So these are just really easy to extend all the way out. So at first I was kind of concerned that these are really thin and it wouldn't be able to support my, um, my or actually right there, my R6, Canon R6 and the lens, but it's actually really sturdy once you get it all set up. So it has a pretty good payload and I'll put the, the, the specs up here on the screen because I don't have those memorized. So looking at the head up here, we've got three axes. So to loosen this one here, we just give it a little half turn and then that will lift up just like that. And then we can tighten this and that locks it into place. Over here on this side, we'll lift up on this little flap, lift that up and then we can close that and that locks it back into place. And again, with this one, we can turn counterclockwise and that just has a nice fluid up and down. So this has what they call their fluid drag system so it just allows me to get some just really nice smooth tilts up and down. And then over here, the third axis is right here. So we can loosen that. And then that allows us to kind of pan left and right, just like that. Now, one thing I found extremely helpful on my video shoots are these levels. There's actually three of them on the tripod. So we can just easily tell if we're level there. And if I swing this around, you can see there's another one here. So I can easily tell when my camera is level. And then if you were shooting vertical, there's also a third one on the inside right here. Here we have the included mounting plate. Now this is pretty small, but I like the fact that I don't have to have a tool. I can just lift this up, screw that into the bottom of my camera fold that flap down, and then this just slides in just like this. Reach over here, tighten that down, just like that. And it's really secure. I didn't have any problems with this holding my R6. One thing that's kind of nice too, if I loosen this a little bit, you'll see we've got some play in here, but it's not going to fall out. So that's like a little bit of added extra um, security measures there. Now, one challenge I did run into is with the small plate, if you try to open up the camera door down here, the battery door, you're not going to be able to get your camera battery out. So you have to take it off the tripod in order to do that. But I found a good workaround. So the workaround for me was to take my base plate from my DJI Ronin S, mount that to the bottom of my camera. And this is nice because it can actually open up much wider to accommodate wider base plates lock that in. So right here, if you could imagine the bottom of the camera door, when I go to open it, it hits right here. So all I do is I loosen this, 
slide this base plate back as far as it'll go, lock it back down, and then when the door opens, it doesn't hit this part right here. So I notice it doesn't work that way on all cameras. On my Canon M6, regardless of where I place that, this ends up hitting right here. So it really just depends on what type of camera you have, but there are some workarounds. You might have to get some kind of um, rig or some kind of cage that goes around your camera to kind of offset that. But that was the workaround that I found for my setup. Once you have the camera mounted, all we do is turn it, the handle to the left just a little bit. Now you'll see it kind of starts off jerky, but then once you get it moving, it moves pretty fluid. Now granted, it doesn't have quite the smoothness that I get with the 502H because it's got a shorter handle and a little bit different fluid head mechanism. But with a little bit of practice, you can get some really, really smooth pans with this and get some great shots for video. Behind this rubber gasket, we've got a 3 8 inch thread. Now this allows us to add things like a external monitor or any other kind of attachment that you want that takes a 3 8 inch thread. Now, if you tend to do a lot of photography or videography outdoors, you might take advantage of this feature. I probably won't use it very often, but it's nice to know that I've got that capability in case maybe I'm doing some family videos or family photography. You can bring this up. If you have uneven uh, terrain, we're gonna pull down on this little lever over here, lift up. And then what we can do is extend this out kind of back here. So now we've got it kind of balanced. If you do something like this though, make sure you put some kind of sandbag or maybe some weight right here so that it doesn't topple over forward. And then being able to just easily come over here, find my level. Now my camera's perfectly level. With my previous tripod, I found myself all the time, even filming in here, a lot of times my horizon would be kind of unlevel. So I'd have to go in to post, basically while I'm editing, zoom in a little bit and then rotate the image manually. Here, I can make sure I get it right, right into the camera. And as you can see here, I can actually get really low with this tripod and I can get some just really, really smooth pans kind of from the bottom of a speaker panning up. Now I'm five foot 11 and as you can see with the camera mounted, it's gonna be a little bit shorter. Um, so I may have to squat down just a little bit or bend over a little bit to uh, see through the eyepiece. Um, if you've got a screen like this, it makes it a lot easier. But if you're doing photography or videography and you're taller than six feet, this might not be uh, tall enough for you. So you might wanna look at something that goes a little bit higher than this particular tripod. And the last thing I'll mention, it does include this carrying case. So nothing super fancy here, pretty thin material. There's a little bit of padding on the sides, just a simple zipper right here, Manfrotto logo and then a little strap that you can throw over your shoulder. So that's nice to be able to just throw that in there, throw it on your bag or attach it to a backpack. Uh, in my case, I just put it inside here, slide it in my suitcase and I'm good to go. So overall, this is a really great fit for my needs. When I'm traveling, I've got something lightweight, really durable. I love the levels on it. We've got three axes. I've got some decent fluid head movement so I can get some nice pans, some nice tilts. Um, and not have to carry a big, massive tripod and tripod head. Well guys, I'll leave a link to this tripod down in the description below if you're interested in that for your videography or photography needs. And as always, you guys be blessed, and we'll catch you in the next video.